We learned new information today about the German pilot who deliberately crashed a plane into the French Alps last week, killing all 150 people on board. Investigators say Andreas Lubitz had researched information on how cockpit doors worked and looked into ways to carry out suicide. They called his actions premeditated murder. And in all the news coverage, there's one key piece that keeps getting repeated over and over. The airline knew six years ago that he suffered severe depression. Psychological stability. Mental illness. Severe depression. Lubitz did seek treatment from several doctors, but depression, as you know, is a sensitive topic and one a lot of people do not fully understand. So joining me now to talk about it are two experts in the field. They are Dr. Ken Duckworth, Medical Director for the National Alliance on Mental Illness, Dr. Nancy Rapport, a certified psychiatrist and Associate Professor of Psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. Good to see you both. I'm going to say something to you I know you know long before I say it. When someone with depression, for example, does something horrible like this, then the mindset is then all people with depression are potential suicide pilots. That is what you get after something like that, is it not, doctor? The classic cognitive trap. The vast majority of people who live in with depression are doing well, battling an illness, and their struggle around safety is with themselves. This is such an extremely rare uh, off the beaten path event. I'm not even sure it should be in the category of depression. This, is, this might be something else completely. By the way, but staying on depression just for a second, at least that's the diagnosis we hear through the media, and we'll find out more as days goes ahead. What is it, roughly 20% of the American population says they've had some episode of clinical depression at some point in their life. Is that roughly where we well, are? Well, 6.5%, 20% of teenagers may say they've had thoughts about okay. suicide. 6.5% of the, of the population will have clinical depression. And when we talk about depression, sometimes it might be classic signs like trouble sleeping, difficulty concentrating, suicidal thoughts. And then sometimes you'll have uh, people who get really irritable and angry and isolated. So where does the truth lie? I know there's a whole spectrum, obviously. It's not you just everybody is different who suffers from depression. Where does the truth lie? What can a person or can't a person do who's being treated for depression? I'm talking about somebody who's either taking medication or counseling or what. What can and can't, can they be a pilot, for example? Can they do a high risk job like that? What can't they do, Dr. Rapport? Well, I think it's a little bit like diabetes. If it's treated, then, and you're, and you're uh, able to um, conduct yourself in a way that's safe, then you ought to, it, it's always about function, so. Would you sign off on somebody piloting a plane if you felt he or she had his or her depression under control? Yes, if I had a working relationship with them and we had an understanding that they could uh, share if they were deteriorating and having suicidal thoughts. Would Doctor, you, would you? It all depends on the story. And what I think in a, in a case like this um, where we don't know the facts, and you know the trouble psychiatry got into, saying that Barry Goldwater was the most unstable candidate. Mm -hmm. There's a rule in psychiatry. We're not really allowed to comment on people that we haven't evaluated. 49 ourselves. states agreed with that, by the it's way. Exactly not the right. instability, <laughs> but in any case. Yeah, yeah. well, you know. <laughs> but go ahead. I'm it sorry. was a consensus choice. Yeah. I mean, I think in situations like this, human behavior can also have a dimension of unpredictability, which is why you have to build in redundant systems. I was on a flight uh, about two years ago where a pilot clearly got some very bad news on his cell phone. This guy had no psychiatric illness of any kind. He was screaming on his cell phone. He then put his cell phone down, got into the plane, and you know, started the plane. Now, did I feel unsettled? I did. Did I get on the plane? That's a, si a situation where you have to say human behavior, not a psychiatric vulnerability, requires us to have redundancies, have more than one person in the cockpit, requires us to have systems, because human behavior you know, can also have a small dimension of unpredictability. Can I talk about another kind of what you might not call redundancy, but I will for purposes of this discussion. We don't know yet what the doctors knew and didn't know. You're right, it's all media reports. Not what obligation, let's stay in this country, the doctors have, what is this, this Tarasov rule or something based on a case? If you as a doctor are treating somebody who you believe uh, has great potential to do harm to either him or herself, or more importantly in this case, to others, you have an obligation to report that despite the, the doctor-patient right. privilege, correct? Right, you break the confidentiality correct? at that point. And, and do, do doctors do that? And you tell that? people I mean, that all the time. When you first meet people, you say, uh, that, you know, there's confidentiality where we're going to try to work with, say, faulty logic, because many times when people are suicide, suicidal, they think of themselves as a perceived burden. It's yeah, a, but if, even if you do that with full disclosure, uh, which I assume you have to do, it's the right th doesn't that cause the bond of trust that's so critical in your treatment to be frayed before you even begin? I, the person saying, I'm worried if I tell you everything I'm really thinking, you're going to end up reporting me to the cops or some authorities or somebody. 
Well, there's an art to building an alliance, and, uh, and hopefully when you have someone in your office, there's a level of ambivalence. If someone is dead set on killing themselves and they decide to go underground, then you're, you're, you're in a difficult position. But what it also highlights is many times people are afraid to ask someone if they're suicidal because they think it's going to plant their, uh, the idea in their head, and it's, it's not the case. Can I ask one, one last thing? We all agree that the, the, the stigma that uh, unfairly in the vast majority of cases trickles down to people with depression because of situations like this. Those who, in the general population, those who actually suffer from depression, do they start worrying about being candid about their own condition because of how the world around them now sees people with depression because of people like Lubitz? You look at this story, the great danger in this story is really probably not getting on a flight. Mm -hmm. the, the systems will correct. What's the great danger? The great danger is that people with depression, which is a treatable condition and a real cause of premature death in our society, both from suicide and from untreated medical problems which attend to depression, the great danger is that people will take the wrong message. I can't be in that club. Every mm -hmm. time Demi Lovato says, I'm doing yeah. well, I'm successful, I have 30 million Twitter followers, I cut myself, be like me, I'm improving my life. Every time Catherine Zeta-Jones says, I have bipolar disorder too, people say, hey, maybe I can join that club. Maybe it's okay that it is part of the human condition. The danger is, you read a story like this, it's probably a much more complicated story than this Tip man of the ice depression. Course, yeah. yeah. 15 seconds to finish it up, Dr. Rapport. You agree with all that? What I'd say is the message I'd want to get across is that depression is treatable and not to feel ashamed. If you, ha if you have a problem and you're feeling suicidal, there are ways to get help and, uh, and, and people in the majority move forward. And this is a complete outlier. Thanks for conveying that message, Dr. Duckworth. Thank good to you. See you. Pleasure to see you. Dr. Rapport, good to see you as good well. You. Thank you so much.